Hola, hola, my name is Ramon, cosmetic chemist, esthetician, sunscreen lover. We are here talking about, I think, the most highly anticipated part of my best of 2023 skincare videos. We're talking sunscreens, part one. I will have a second video coming, hopefully in the next few days with the part two. But today we're talking about my favorite American sunscreens and mineral sunscreens of the year. This year I spent a lot of time traveling around the US and with that, I was up in drugstores, Walmart, Target, Walgreens, Ulta, looking at the sunscreen offerings, especially the really affordable sunscreen offerings. So before I get into this, I will say I'm pro-American sunscreen. I love an American sunscreen just because, well, you get better sunscreens out of Korea. You get better sunscreens out of Europe. That's tea. The formulations are a lot more innovative, a lot more advanced, most likely a lot more elegant as well than what it's offered in the U.S. We know why. I'm not going to go into all that right now. What I will say is your average person in the U.S. is not about to catch a flight to Milan to buy sunscreen or wait two weeks to get a shipment from Korea for sunscreen they love when they can just go to Target or Walmart or Walgreens or even Sephora and Ulta and just pick up a sunscreen that they know they like that they know it's gonna work well for them, wear well with makeup and all that. I am pro-American sunscreen. Obviously, they all have to get tested. They all have to pass certain metrics to get the SPF blank designation, broad spectrum designation. Some brands go above and beyond to get the PA ratings as well. So I'm pro-American sunscreen, but what I will also say is it's really interesting seeing how American brands formulate and develop their formulations in order to get good SPF values. This is especially for mineral formulations, but also maintain a level of elegance. In Europe, I mean, everyone there is pretty much white. The objective is get a higher SPF, add titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide in a formula, fun fact, that boosts your SPF value very easily. But as we all know, titanium dioxide, white cast. Also in Europe, you have a lot of insoluble chemical filters, you know, sort of M for example. Great for getting high SPF, white cast. So it's always interesting when you look at the US formulation, you have behind the scenes knowledge like I do, the SPF boosters that are used or things that are used to increase the SPF value in the testing while still trying to maintain a very elegant formula. So today we're talking about the American sense sunscreens that really did it for me, as well as the few mineral sunscreen options that were good enough for me. As always, I'll have timestamps down below so you can fast forward to whatever part of the video you want to watch. And also, as always, these are just the sunscreens that I discovered this year or that launched this year that I found particularly really good. Obviously, that does not negate my prior year's favorites, but let's get into it. Starting with my American chemical sunscreens, I have oily acne prone skin. And a lot of these were actually purchased while I was either in California, Vegas, like the American Southwest, West Coast where it's more dry and more hot or where I was in a more tropical, humid, muggy climate. So I was looking at matte, lightweight, but I think starting off with a couple of interesting launches this year from Neutrogena, they have a new Hydra Boost. If you've never tried a Neutrogena sunscreen, I will be honest and say a lot of them don't hit, unfortunately, and they have high SPS and they claim oil-free, very matte, shine-free, but in order to do so, there's a lot of mattifiers. They're very greasy. Then their Hydra Boost sunscreen, which is the other one in this line, notorious for the worst icing of your entire life. So this launch this year and everyone was like, what's the tea with her? This is a really nice sunscreen launch. This is an SPF 50. It is not water resistant. We're looking at some of the ingredient highlights as well. This is fragrance free, but it does have alcohol. It has something in here called Sim Relief, which just helps to soothe the skin, but also has really good antioxidant benefits to it. You also have vitamin E. And because it's a Hydra Boost line, it's intended to really hydrate the skin. It's a little bit more of a moisturizing texture. It is a gel cream texture, and I'm not gonna say it's the most lightweight gel cream in the world. It is a moisturizing gel cream. It leaves me with a glowy finish, but I was just very surprised that, you know, it's a good Hydra Boost sunscreen. It did not sting my eyes, although I'm notorious for having like the least eye sting potential ever. Like I will put sunscreen directly in my eye and be totally fine. But a really positive launch from Neutrogena. I really like the texture of this, really liked the overall effect on the skin. I have oily skin, but I do love a good glow. I love a good moisturizing sunscreen that's not greasy, which this definitely lives in. So that one was glowy, staying on the glowy sunscreen screen train from Hawaiian Tropic. This is their Sheer Touch Serum SPF 50. This was a surprise hit this year. This was a banger. I think it was like my top, this is my top five favorite sunscreens of the year for sure. I bought this just because I saw the word serum and sheer touch on here and I saw SPF 50 and I was like, okay, Hawaiian Tropic, <laughs> let's stay humble. I was the one who had to stay humble. I was shocked by this because it is a very, very lightweight, like gel cream texture, it melts into the skin, but it does give a glow. But the tea is, it's not greasy, it's not emollient. That glow is primarily from 
It has functional filler in there, some like basically light reflecting pigment that gives you a radiance to the skin. That's not like Tin Man Chrome. It just gives your skin a really beautiful radiance so that you can use this if you have oily skin, get a really good glow, but you're not gonna be an oil slick. This is SPF 50. This has some really nice um, ingredient call outs. This has hyaluronic acid, it has hibiscus, papaya, and mango fruit extracts. So you're getting a good antioxidant kick from those. It's oil free. And this is 80 minute water resistant. I had to like double check that because it does not specify anywhere on this packaging that it's water resistant and I got rid of the box obviously but it does specify the ingredients reapply after 80 minutes of water activity or sweating and then on the website I did see it is water and sweat resistant the other tea on this is that I can't find this at like any US retailer online anymore I bought this I believe I was in Walmart I can only find an SPF 30 anywhere but this, this clearly says 50, so I know the tea on that. But if you see the SPF 30 of this, do know if you have oily skin, you want something that gives you a good radiance, but you're not greasy or oily, and it's it's not like a moisturizing feel on the skin. This is a really great option, and it's water and sweat resistant. This was worth every penny, and I love the I love the look of this on the skin, the feel this on the skin. This was again top five sunscreen of the year. A pricier option, but one I did buy this year, and I don't have it on me right now. I was at Sephora, and I was like, you know what? Let me bite the bullet, try it out. From your ad, it's their oil and pore control mattifying face sunscreen. SPF 45 PA4 plus. So I, I bought this myself while I was at Sephora because I had my eye on it for a while, wanted to try, and I think I had a few recommendations. This is, it, it's a very interesting sunscreen experience because the texture of it, it feels a little bit more rich. Like it's definitely feels like a cream sunscreen when you dispense it. Because it is oil and pore mattifying, pore control mattifying, there's a lot of mattifying powders in here, which if you have deep skin, you know that is a yellow flag. It's kind of like a, ooh, tread with caution because the more powder mattifiers you put in something, that's more white powder you're putting into something, which leads to a good risk of a white cast. But this works in, if you have nothing else underneath this really, this actually does give you a really nice natural to satin matte finish. It works in pretty easily and I can confirm it actually is very deep skin friendly. If you ever have concerns about, is the sunscreen gonna look good on deep skin? I have a lot of references I always go back to because obviously I don't got deep skin. Glow Skin Guy on Instagram, his name is Rashawn. He's a great resource. Tamino Abby here on YouTube. I'll have all the people tagged below, but she's a uh, bigger on YouTube. She's a great resource as well and does a lot of European sunscreens so does Rashawn. And then Julian Sass, AKA Scamander14 on Instagram is also a great resource for deep skin reviews. Julian's got like a whole database you can always refer to. And so this one was one I was very surprised to see looked really good on deep skin as well. The only con of this is the price point. It is a Sephora sunscreen and it is Murad. Murad is obviously not known for being cheap. This is $49 for 50 mil. So if you're gonna get it, get it on a Sephora sale, get it when it's discounted. But really great formula for oily skin if you do want a matte finish. Ingredient call out. It does have a complex called Ever Matte, which is in my favorite Milani setting spray, which keeps me matte matte. And that is just a botanical extract complex that helps to control shine. It also has a couple of bark extracts that similar vein helps to control shine, reduce the look of shine and oil on the skin, and then the powder absorbers. So not a lot of ingredient like things. It's not a very complex formula outside of the mattifiers, but surprisingly very matte. A very, very hot launch this year. I think this is on everyone's favorites, especially those with oily skin from Naturium. Their UV Reflect and Antioxidant SPF 50. This was a banger, especially because it was an American sunscreen. It was geared more towards oily skin and claimed to have more matte finish. I'm not gonna say this is powder matte. It's by no means powder matte, matte, matte. None of these really are. No sunscreen's really gonna give you that effect, I'm gonna be honest, especially an American sunscreen. This does leave a beautiful satin finish to the skin. Really fun, interesting formulation points. There's really interesting marketing and ingredient claims behind this one too. This has something called InfraGuard in it, which is like basically an antioxidant complex that helps to give antioxidant protection to the skin. In. The supplier does also claim it offers blue light protection, but I always just say really good antioxidant protection. This also feature a functional filler basically that helps give it a soft focus effect, AKA it makes your skin just look a little bit more blurred. It helps reduce the appearance of some imperfections, especially like textural, pore related. And that was the UV reflect part of this. Big controversy when this launched just because of the name and some of the marketing claims behind it. I'll be the first one to tell you marketing and what goes on in the labs, worlds apart usually. And obviously someone has to approve all that. But I mean, with honest training launch, it's always a little bit scandalous, always something to go on there, which I mean, I live for, I live for the drama. At the end of the day, it's a sunscreen. It's a really nice sunscreen. They go to the extra effort to get the extra PA rating testing on this. This is SPF 50 PA4 plus. This is also, this is water and sweat resistant to some degree. It'll be on screen probably. But all of those things combined, interesting formulation point, really light, milky texture, beautiful, soft focus,
silk is satin finish, water resistant, decent drugstore price point. Drug, drugstore is not cheap anymore. Let's be real here. Um, this was a really great option, really elegant, really nice addition to the sunscreen launch from them. Obviously, I get behind the scenes tea because I know Susan and the team behind the brand. So I get to hear about things and I get to try things as they're developing. And so again, when it comes to what consumers want, what is actually feasible. And then because Susan is Susan, there's so many things that happen on social media in the skincare world. Realize if you, well, most likely if you're watching this video, but also if you're like, if you follow me on social media and you have for a while, this little skincare world we live in is a very small contained world. All the drama that happens in this world pretty much stays within it. So Susan's part of that. She sees everything people say. She also sees things that people want and comment. So when it comes to all those things, those are factors that go into how she goes about creating the products for Naturium or helping to develop the products for that. So always interesting when you think of things from that perspective. A contender for one of my top favorite sunscreens of the year as well from Copper Tone. This is their oil-free plus shine control face SPF 45. This is a 40 minute. This is 40 minute water resistant. I'm gonna be real. I forgot where I bought this. I think it was Walmart. I forget Walmart where, but I saw Copper Tone. I saw oil-free shine control and automatic buy. I think at Walmart right now online, this is like less than $10 too. So really good deal for 74 mil. So very affordable. Ingredient call outs for this. This has a little bit of vitamin C in the form of sodium ascorbyl phosphate. This has vitamin E in it. Again, this is oil free. So if you have very oily acne prone skin, this would be a really good option for you. The texture one for this is not like super lightweight, super milky. It's definitely giving like a richer gel cream texture. And I think that's due to more waxes, more fatty acids or fatty alcohols in this, but it sits down on the skin really nice. You do feel very moisturized, but the finish itself is not very shiny. It's not greasy. It's not oily. It's you're, you're left with a more natural finish. You do feel moisturized. So it's definitely the opposite of like the Naturium or the Hawaiian Tropic where those feel very lightweight serum on the skin. It's got a little body to it, but you're not shiny. If you've ever tried the European Nivea Shine Control, very similar world to this in terms of skin feel and texture. But I mean, oil-free shine control, great option for oily skin. Those things were good to consider. When I was in the Southwest and it was hot, but dry, this is a really good option to wear because it kept me moisturized, but I wasn't shiny and makeup wore beautifully on top of this. So this was definitely one that I burned through a lot, especially when I was outside for a long time and I was sweating just because 40 minute water resistant, really good formula. That's affordable. So my number one sunscreen of the year, I'll put it right here right now. This was actually purchased because of you guys. I had a lot of comments on YouTube and on Instagram being like, you need to try this sunscreen. It's a really good option at the drugstore. It's affordable. From Banana Boat, this is their Light as Air Face Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus. This was a banger. This is, it, Light as Air is very accurate. The texture for this, it just melts into the skin. It's a gel cream texture that just spreads so nicely and so easily and just melts into the skin. This is an oil-free formula and the claims behind this are that it absorbs quickly and it's non-greasy. That is the truth. Other ingredient call outs, 80 minute water and resistant. I don't know if I said that. This is alcohol-free, but it does have fragrance in it. And then it has vitamin C in the form of sodium ascorbyl phosphate and vitamin E and panthenol in there. So those things noted, I was like, oh, it's going to be a very conditioning, very hydrating formula, super lightweight on the skin. You are not shiny. This is like natural to satin matte finish, wears beautifully over makeup, reapplies beautifully on itself. This was a banger. This I wore a lot when it was really, really hot, really muggy. I didn't feel heavy. I didn't feel nasty. I didn't feel greasy. This is a banger. The issue is sometimes I don't, I can't find this on retailer websites. A lot of the times this does exist on the banana boat website itself. I bought this at Walmart, I believe. I was at Walmart a lot this summer. But this is a beautiful formula. If you got oily, acne prone skin, you want a workout, sweat, swimming pool, beach resistant sunscreen that has high protection in it. This is a beautiful, beautiful option. This is my number one sunscreen of the year. Actually, I take that back. I have another number one sunscreen of the year and that'll be in the next video. You're not going to be surprised, but this is a close, close, close number two. And then the last chemical offering of the year that I was very happy with from Bioma, their SPF 30. Controversial maybe as well, because I posted their view of this, how lightweight it was, how it just sunk into my skin. I'm like, this is a beautiful daily wear sunscreen and it's not water and sweat resistant. And it's obviously SPF 30, so it's not giving you SPF 50 plus, like ultra heavy duty, high octane protection. Great for daily wear if you're going from home to school or work and back. If you need to reapply a little bit, maybe reapply over makeup. Really nice lightweight texture, very lightweight gel. I had everyone being like, this pilled on me. This was pilly. Even my husband was like, that was a pilly formula. I did not have those issues. I am very fortunate when it comes to most sunscreens though. I rarely get pilling the same way I rarely get eye burn. So I like this formula and I love the texture of it. It was a very 
elegant American sunscreen offering. And I'm gonna stick by that. Ingredient callouts for that one in true bioma fashion. It does have cholesterol, ceramides, fatty acids to really support the moisture barrier, which again, knowing that, how lightweight it was, gagged. And it also has things like beta glucan, panthenol to help hydrate the skin, soothe the skin. And then a really interesting SPF enhancer in here as well. I saw a couple of botanical extracts, looked into them, and they are both part of this SPF enhancing complex that helps to some degree boost SPF protection you're gonna get from the formula, both UVB and UVA protection. So it's always interesting to see, looking at the ingredients list, how companies go behind developing these US SPF formulations from a cosmetic chemist perspective, especially having my sunscreen formulation training done in Europe. The way that we approach sunscreen formulation is very, very different. So now let's get to some of the other things. Let's start with mineral sunscreens first, which I know for a lot of people is a very hot topic. I will be honest and say, I did not try a lot of mineral sunscreens this year even hybrid formulations this year. And I feel like, I don't know if there just wasn't a lot of launches period, or if I just kind of steered back. I know a lot of brands at Sephora were launching mineral sunscreen like Kosas and a few other brands. I do have the Kosas one, which I will review probably next year and get into that for 2024, just right on the corner. But yeah, out of the handful I tried, I only have two I'm gonna feature in today's video. The first one probably isn't gonna be a shock to you guys. Fenty Skin launched an SPF 30 mineral sunscreen. This features 15% zinc oxide and overall, if you are up to maybe a little bit darker than me, this is actually a really beautiful formula and texture. The original Fenty Hydra Visor sunscreen, already, it does a thing where you wear it where your skin just looks so perfected and so smooth and so gorgeous and supple and juicy. You're glowy. It's definitely not like an oily skin mattifying sunscreen, but you're, it, it's a nice look to the skin and it smells delicious too. That one, A, was scented. They launched a fragrance-free version, which if you're sensitive to fragrance, that's one thing. But also, even for me, that burned the fucking hell out of my eyes. I tell the story all the time, but there's one time I was in Chicago driving from Milwaukee into Chicago and in the middle of the highway, it got into my eyes and it was the kind of ice thing where I could not open my eyes. So I'm going on the highway like 60, 70 miles per hour blind. So that was, that's always my Fenty sunscreen story. So a mineral option is really great because it's better for sensitive skin if you are sensitive to chemical UV filters. This is still scented. I don't know if they have a fragrance version of this one, but I love the Fenty skin scents. They're so tropical and juicy. I will say this one have a white cast on deep skin. Tamino did do a review of this. It was not cute on dark skin. So if you are melanated, this is probably not gonna be the option for you. I will say, and I will continue to say, if there was a brand that was gonna do tinted sunscreens, the house down, it would have been Fenty. So seeing this launched, I was a little bit like wah wah, but I do think it's a nice formula, but in true mineral sunscreen fashion, it's not gonna be good for all skin tones. The ingredient callouts for this, there's not a lot. You do have the botanical extracts that Fenty uses a lot. You have the Kalahari melon. This does have baobab extract as well. So you're getting good antioxidants. You're getting really nice hydration out of this. This also has niacinamide as well as a complex called Afipor, which those are good for oily skin and helping to control some shine and niacinamide as we know, great for reducing the appearance of redness, helping to support skin moisturization, a lot of things. So seeing those in this, I'm like, okay, it's still a moisturizing formula. Like it's still glowy on the skin. I will say, I think this is a little bit less glowy than the chemical sunscreen though. And the other mineral sunscreen option I don't have on me right now from Neutrogena though, it's their Mineral UV Tint Face Liquid Sunscreen, SPF 30. So this was interesting because they launched this in four tinted shades and they actually have like a deep shade. I believe I tried the medium shade on this one and overall the tints are not bad. I know Rashawn tried the deep skin tint and on him it looked decent. He said it got weird as the day progressed or he reapplied. Like it looked very decent on him. The only qualms with this is that it's a very very emollient glowy formulation. Also interestingly I don't know if it was due to some of the backlash that happened in this last year around SPF boosters especially salicylate as like hidden chemical sunscreens. This one is a 100% mineral formulation no beta lactosalicylate, so that's worth noting. But when you have like a full, full mineral sunscreen option, you do have to have a lot of mineral filters in there to get that decent broad spectrum SPF protection. They don't use nano, and also you have the iron oxides in there as well. So you have all this pigment in there and you have to have the ingredients that disperse those pigments evenly through the formula. And overall, it's just a very emollient, greasy formulation. So it's better for dry skin, but it's in this video because the tints were actually really decent in my opinion. The only other brand that I know that has a very comprehensive mineral sunscreen tinted shade range is Tower 28. I have never tried their sunscreen. I've tried a lot of their other skincare, really good skincare. I've never tried that tinted sunscreen. So I have nothing to really compare this Neutrogena one to, but the thing to know 
is it $17, but it's only for 32 mil, not the traditional 50 mil. So this is like more of a foundation, but there's no coverage to this really. So yeah, very interesting. Overall, I'd rate this launch maybe like a C, but I didn't try a lot of mineral sunscreens and even at a C, this was better than most of the other ones. So that's why it's on this list. I know if I don't do a little mineral recap or roundup, people feel some type of way. And this wasn't a horrible launch. It just wasn't for oily skin individuals like me. So that's why it's on this list. And then two non-face options. First of all, a lip option from Black Girl Sunscreen. This is their Make It Pop. This is an SPF 50 broad spectrum lip gloss sunscreen. This is everything. I loved this formula and I actually bought this. We were in Palm Springs at Ulta. I was like, you know what? Let me just try it out. Gorgeous. It's a rich gloss. It's like a glass clear gloss and it doesn't have a weird SPF taste. It kind of has a vanilla y scent to it too, but it's very subtle. This was a win, 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 win. It's also like $10. So this was a gorgeous formulation. What I love about it is that it's a clear gloss. So, I mean, I don't got an issue putting on a lip gloss. I know men generally don't like that. So that's something to consider. But if you are someone who doesn't care that it's a lip gloss and you just want something clear to go on the lips to offer protection that doesn't taste like SPF and it's not like a lip, like a chapstick type of texture, great option. If you are a makeup girly, and you love just like a dark lip liner, clear gloss, great for you. If you want to layer this on top of your lip color, great option. So overall, this was a banger. Love this formula. This is one of my favorite product discoveries of the year, period. And the fact that it's an SPF lip product and it's a gloss, A1. And the last sunscreen for this video is a body sunscreen from Kroger. This is their sunscreen oil spray. This one is brand new. We did buy backups. The one that we used is tore up. This I bought because we were in LA about to go to Palm Springs and I was like, I need a body sunscreen. We're in SoCal. We're going to lay poolside, beachside. We're getting some sun. We bought this amongst like a dozen other body sunscreens. And this this was a knockout standout by far. It was so good we had to buy a few more bottles just to have. The tea is that obviously in true Kroger sunscreen fashion, this is a super goop dupe of the sunscreen oil. I've never used the super goop sunscreen oil, so I can't actually speak to any of the sensory comparisons. But talking about the texture, it's a sunscreen oil, so it's very glossy, shiny, reflective, radiant on the body. But I have a drier body, so I'm fine with that. This is a mist texture, so the idea is you liberally spray it, rub it in and everything on the skin though this looks incredible you look moisturized dewy glowy this is an oil so just know that it is a body oil so you will be you'll be emollient don't wear any of your good clothes with this what i will say or be very careful but this is also water and sweat resistant for 80 minutes and this smells incredible i know i was talking about like the fenty skin like that tropical fruity smell this has it too and it just smells so good it doesn't smell candy it's not like a techy candy synthetic like sweet smell like you just smell very fruit very tropical it's delicious and when i say tropical i'm leaning towards fruit it's not like you know some bum and vacation that have like that coconutty vanilla no it's more like fruit and in terms of ingredient call outs this does have a few interesting extracts in there you have pomegranate extract calendula extract as well as this kelp extract and those are offering some antioxidant skin protecting benefits helping to hydrate the skin as well so this formula is more than meets the eye but yeah for how affordable this was how gorgeous it smelled like this it was enjoyable to wear this my husband would like jack this at any opportunity he could and just lather himself in it. it it was so fun to use which is what i love with the sunscreen it's affordable you get a lot of product like as with as much as we used it it took us a long time to burn through this this is seven fluid ounces 213 mil and it's spf 50 protection water and sweat resistant this was like a home run banger but do know it is an oil so you got to be careful with how you wear it so with that those are my favorite american and mineral sunscreens of of the year do stay tuned international is coming next in the next few days but let me know down below in the comments section what were some of your favorite american sunscreen discoveries or just sunscreens in general of this year and obviously i want face i want lip i want body whatever you got for me let me know in the comments section don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when i post more skincare sunscreen and beauty related content but also to see the rest of my best of 2023 skincare series again i still got a couple more videos left so turn on that notification bell don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys bye Thank you.